Jesus of Nazareth. Perhaps the most influential person in the history of mankind, believed on by many world religions, his teachings have resonated in the hearts and minds of humanity for two millennia. Though he remains by far the most famous historical figure, his identity has remained the subject of much debate among religious circles for well over a thousand years and continues to this day. Though there exists today billion dollar industries based on his name and legacy, even those who claim to follow him seem unclear about the doctrines and creeds built around him. Many believe Jesus to be a unique man, prophet, and teacher of the good news of God, while others believe that Jesus was and is God himself, and that here, in Bethlehem, is where God was born in human form to experience humanity for himself. This debate has been at the core of epic religious controversies, laid the foundation of entire empires, and was the backdrop for the bloodshed of martyrs. So, who is Jesus? What is he? Or can we even know? This is called the Ishangu bone. Found in the Congo region of Africa by a Belgian explorer, the Ishangu bone represents what most scientists believe to be the earliest record of mathematical communication. It contains groupings of single cuts in the bone that archaeologists agree reflects a mathematical endeavor by their frequency and order. Older than the first language or first word symbols, the idea of one is here. One, the oldest idea. So basic and so fundamental, it is no wonder that the God of Jesus used the idea of one to define himself all throughout the Jewish and Christian scriptures. Most Christians believe that Jesus is God, that Jesus' Father is God, and that the Holy Spirit is God, all while claiming that God is one. Because they are uncomfortable with calling themselves tritheists, more comfortable with being labeled as monotheists, Orthodox Christians and Trinitarians insist that the Hebrew word for one, Echad, implies plurality. But is this the case? Echad means one. And that I can't, nor will I, judge what <clears throat> Christians have done for the word Echad for the last 2,000 years. They've been rather uh, creative in taking the word one to mean three or multiples of one and so on, but that's, that's not my business. I know what Echad means, and if someone wants to call a chair a table, it's a free country. You can call a chair a table all you want, it's still a chair and a chad is still one. That's all I can say. For a point of view much closer to that of the Christian community, we'll go to Atlanta Bible College and gain the perspectives of one of the world's foremost Unitarian experts on the subject, author Sir Anthony Buzzard. I was invited to, to study the scriptures on this issue. I really didn't have a fixed view. I was prepared to think that we could, been, we could have been wrong. As I began to look at the biblical text and the history of this doctrine, it, it appeared there was uh, no smoke without a fire. There was something at stake here of great value. If only because the initial opposition you meet from people who haven't examined this is rather scary. They tend to switch you off immediately. But they haven't really examined this carefully. They have assumed that their leader has learned it correctly in the theological college, but they haven't realized that there may be a, a, an equally proficient clergyman down the street who's saying the opposite, who, who learned the opposite view in another college. Jesus, of course, was a Jew, and I think we as Bible readers need to always remember that. He's working out of his own Jewish heritage, his own Jewish legacy. And the most fundamental thing that a Jew believes about God is that he is one. 
a single individual, a single divine person. And so Jesus then demonstrates that Jewishness to the core uh, in answer to your question, what is Jewish monotheism? Well, Jesus tells us in Mark chapter 12, verse 28 and following, he is in, in conversation with a friendly scribe who is checking Jesus out to see if he's straight theologically. And Jesus makes a, a remarkable statement there. He says, the greatest of all the commandments is this, listen, Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. That's the core of Jewish monotheism, unitary monotheism, non-Trinitarian monotheism. The idea of Echad, or one, would have been especially meaningful to Jesus, because to the Jews, the idea of one is central to what is called the Shema. The Shema is shorthand for the Creed of Israel, which can be found in Deuteronomy 6.4 of the Old Testament. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Elohinu Adonai Echad. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Right, the Shema is simply the Hebrew word uh, meaning to hear, and it's the command form of the Hebrew verb, to hear. So it's in Deuteronomy 6, in verses 5, 4 and 5, and also parallel verses close by, I think, in, in Deuteronomy 4, 35, where it says that there that God is alone, there's no one beside him. The God of Israel speaks as a unit, as a single individual. The idea that he ever speaks as a triune God is really foreign to the text and foreign to Jesus' thinking. A bit like asking a silly question like, what kind of computer did Paul use? Well, they didn't have computers in those days. What sort of God does the Bible present? They didn't know about the Trinity in the days of Jesus and Paul. It's foreign to that whole environment. The Shema is uh, the central statement of uh, Jewish theology, um, an affirmation of the presence of God uh, from the beginning through our lives, continuing on into the future. Uh, in Jewish tradition, the first sentence a young boy is taught is the Shema Yisrael, Hero Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. When a person dies, according to Jewish tradition, the last sentence he says is this affirmation. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Uh, it's part of every worship service. Uh, it's uh, just an, a central part of our uh, tradition and understandings about God. The Jews are, I think, rightly scared at any departure from the unique unitary monotheistic position of their Tanakh, of their Old Testament. So much so that in that Shema, it's rather interesting, uh, they actually write a couple of letters big there, they, they print them huge to call attention to the fact that you must never lose track of this hero Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. They write two letters large and those letters happen to spell out the word for witness in Hebrew. So this is a witness now against you if you depart from this. So I, I think we must respect the Jewish heritage in itself, but much more we must respect as Christians the Jewish heritage of our Jewish Savior, Jesus. And I'm nervous of an anti-Semitic tendency here. Why would we want to depart from that Jewish creed? If we say we love Jesus, wouldn't we keep his commandments? And isn't his first commandment, listen Israel, don't lose track of the fact that the Lord God is one Lord. Mark chapter 12 verses 48 through 29 reads, And one of the scribes came up and heard them disputing with one another, and seeing that he answered them well, asked him, which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered, The first is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Here we have Jesus affirming the Shema, the Jewish creed of Israel. And we know that the Jews did not believe in a trinity or a three-in-one God as being built into the Shema. Therefore, we can deduct that Jesus himself was not a Trinitarian, but a strictly monotheistic Unitarian, meaning Jesus, like all Jews, would deny that anyone or anything was Almighty God except the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. However, in contrast to the theology of Jesus, most who claim to be followers of Jesus today have abandoned his creed and promoted him to the status of deity, adopting a more modern version of deity that challenges the human identity of Jesus.